Hello, welcome back to the Pro Pilot Playbook Podcast. I'm your co-host Sean, and I'm joined here. With... Yeah, I'm Mike Martin here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Just and uh, working hard, working hard down yeah. in Florida. I see that you're in Florida again. I just got back from Florida. I've actually been gone all week. And uh, yeah, we missed the podcast last week, folks. The Pro Pop Playbook yeah. here, where we bring you insights into your aviation career, the the hacks, the uh, the tricks, the uh, you know all the little tidbits of information to get through your flying career faster and cheaper. And that's uh, right. We, we usually we have been doing these weekly, but I tell you, last week the uh, the work is just opening up, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of what I do is contract stuff and it was just coming out of the woodwork. I couldn't resist it. And then, yeah, um, yeah, we actually, I spent the weekend in Fort Lauderdale last weekend with the family. The owner let, let me bring the wife and kids on the jet, which is nice. And yeah, then, uh, yeah, man. Been running around making money all week and then ended up in Tampa. You didn't get until last night. You got home real late. Didn't you? Yeah. I got home at like one thirty in the morning last night. Yeah. It's been, wow. And then the kids were out of school today because we got like six feet of snow out there. I don't know. It's I'm exaggerating, yeah. but it, it it was a lot of snow. It snowed all night. It was <laughs> down to down to one lane on the interstate driving home at one in the morning, and they just couldn't keep up with it anymore. But uh, yeah, Man. I ended up Friday night. Ended up in in Tampa. Uh, my wow. brother was there. So yeah, I was there for the big game here. Oh man. Yeah. So That's awesome. I didn't go to the game because I didn't have an extra 20 grand for a ticket, but <laughs> we still, it's kind of, it was neat knowing all that was going on right next to you, you know? Oh, heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. Perfect weather down there too for football. Wasn't it 73 or something? Oh God, it was just beautiful. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it was <laughs> on Saturday night. We were all hanging out. Uh, you had a bunch of friends over and stuff. Saturday night, it was, it was like 10 PM and 72 degrees outside. And he's got this oh, little... Man creek this little babbling brook running through his backyard he just bought a new house anyway we are rambling this is not what the show yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah today we're gonna do some more listener questions but we're gonna combine some uh some of the questions coming in are you know more simple and uh i took a few minutes and i put three of them together here uh okay. everybody's kind of asking the same thing actually two people were exact uh, ask, asking exactly the same thing and, uh, you know, you saw from the title of the podcast, choosing a flight school. Right. And, and what we're going to do is give the uh, the 40,000 foot overfly on this one, our perspective, just some of the big, you know, nuts and bolts to it. Um, in the program we sell, we get into explicit detail, breaking each one of these things down and um, getting into it more. But I think we can do a lot of damage just with you know, some of the big, quick items, overflow. The big items yeah. Yeah, that get people here. But uh, so I'll, I'll read the first question. It's probably the, the most uh, got the most meat to it here. This comes in from Luke. And uh, good morning. My name is Luke. I'm currently getting my private pilot's license. I'm doing this from home. But next fall, I would like to move out of state and attend a flight school. Curious on if you guys have any suggestions or know of any flight schools with a good track record. I would also like to know your input on how much time I could save going to a flight school, let's say in Texas, versus going to a school where there's bad weather like Washington State. Thanks for your time. I also appreciate you guys sending your, uh, uh, what's he saying here? I appreciate you guys sp oh, spending your time helping people with their questions and providing great information to your pod on your podcast. Just want to let you know your podcast do help people like me. That's awesome. Cool. I didn't even read yeah. the last part before when I screened it before the, uh, <laughs> yeah, Luke, thank you very much. Yeah. That makes us feel we've good. Been getting a lot of, yeah. We've been getting a lot of nice emails lately. I mean, almost every day now we're, we're getting, so if we haven't gotten to your question, we'll, we'll try to, and we've been trying to, I've been trying to get back to people too. Uh, you know, when we have time to try and try and get caught up, but, uh, as right. you were mentioning, it, it got busy. You know, this coming up here, this is President's Day weekend coming up is a right. huge, huge weekend for uh, for rich people to travel because of the, uh, you know, it's a three day weekend and it's in February and people yep. like to go to warm places kind of thing. So, yeah, it's well, been there's a also busy, a lot of skiing to be done, too. I mean, that weekend right. is huge oh, yeah. out in Colorado and all those ski resorts. 
You know, oh, yeah. this is a very big weekend for them. I yeah. know two pilots right now that are in Park City. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, but uh, back we're digressing again, man. So uh, uh, I can address the weather question. Um, I got a couple of comments on that. So, uh, you know, having been a flight instructor myself at Sporties, another good flight school in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, um, they're known for – they have a catalog, or now it's all internet-based, but back – in the day, they became famous for scaling uh, pilot supplies. So they have a uh, they have a catalog, and uh, they you know it used to be you had to buy gear just from a local shop in a, in an FBO somewhere, you know, and, and they'd have a, just a few items, and then they took it to a whole nother level and became kind of the premier supplier of uh, pilot supplies, Sporty's Pilot Shop. Uh, but then they also got in the flight school business, and they had a huge operation in Cincinnati, and that's where I did a lot of training. And Sean's been out there too and seen it a uh, very nice place but um, we did have I mean you know how it is man I mean November December January in Cincinnati when I was teaching people we would have a lot of IFR days and uh, IFR meaning instrument days in which you would say well if you're doing your instrument rating that's not that bad problem is is uh, all these prop planes you know they don't have any de-icing equipment on them a jet you just take off and you heat up the wings and away you go but um, in a in a prop plane, if you're flying in visible moisture below freezing, so in the clouds below freezing, you can pick up ice on the wings. And uh, there would be uh, times where we, you know, it, many days in the in the winter where it was cloudy uh, and the ceilings were too low to even do pattern work, and uh, the temperatures were right. below freezing, so it would be uh, no icing conditions, and we would go. I mean, I can remember 10 straight days where we couldn't fly, you know. So, obviously, that's a deterrent. Plus yeah, we had a simulation. When it is instrument, um, you know, there's certain things in your instrument training that may or may not be as, uh, you know, if it's actual outside, you may get more done in your training that day if it wasn't actual. You know, if you're just trying to shoot a whole right. bunch of approaches, practice approaches or something that could be done VFR. Uh, without using approach control and actually being on an IFR flight plan, you could, you know, argue very easily you get more done. Now, as you progress into your training, absolutely, you want to see the real stuff. You want to see how the system works. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. So, but and then when you're starting on your private, which this guy's not, I think he's already working through that. But when when you're on your private license, you can't fly at all. It doesn't matter what the temperature is he if says it's he's IFR. Currently getting getting his private. Yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, there's something to be said. You go down to Texas, they have very good weather there, a lot of sunny days. Uh, obviously, the most flight schools probably in the entire world are in Florida. Yep. Um, Sean's, Sean's in Cincinnati digging out a, a foot of snow, and I'm on the beach, right? It is, uh, though, we do have some low ceiling, uh, low ceilings today, maybe, but it was a nice sunset about an hour ago. Now it's getting dark. But, but uh, the weather in general here, it's not just warm. It's, it's very good. There's a lot of VFR days here. And, you know, out west, there's, there's a lot of uh, Embry Riddle Prescott, excellent weather there, too. I mean, um, so it is a factor in deciding. Um, but, you know, our operation at Sporties wasn't shut down when it was IFR and we couldn't fly. I mean, we did have a simulator and you do ground school and all that thing. But, I mean, if, you're, if the name of the game is speed, which is important, and Sean's going to touch on that, uh, better weather is, in general, better. It wouldn't be my only factor in choosing a flight school, but it definitely is one. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, no, it, it is important, but there's some other things to this that you probably want to look at before you even get to the weather thing. Um, you know, you yeah. you say you're working on your private, so I don't know, maybe you're doing this part time while you're working or something. But right. you know, one of the first things, if I'm if I'm choosing a flight school that I'm going to go into and get all my all my certificates and ratings at, um, you know, one of the things I'm going to be looking at is how many airplanes they got. How, how right. busy, how busy is this school? Are these things constantly rented out? Do you guys have, how many instructors you got here? Are these guys full time? Are they uh, show up on the weekends kind of guys that are doing this as a hobby because they're retired now or something, or you got some go getter guys out here that are out to here seven days a week trying to build time and, and are, you know, you know, pumping people through. Sure. Those are some great point factors, big factors. Um, how many, you know, what, is this uh, like a mom and pop school that just caters to uh, middle-aged men trying to get their private pilot's license to take their kids for a ride? Or is, right. is this, and they only, you know, 
99 out of 100 students are getting their private license there? Or is this place pumping out pilots? Like last week, we just had two people take their commercial check ride. You know, I mean, what kind of school is it? Uh, right. Totally. That, that's important. But, uh, well, you know what? Yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So the, there is one other thing here. The, the type of training that Mike and I push in order to do this, because the longer it takes for you to get that, you're probably already learning a little bit of this on your private right now. The longer you take to get all these certificates and ratings, the more money it costs you in more than one way. For instance, you're working on your private right now. You've probably already figured out if you were flying once a week, driving over to the airport, you know, hoping that one day a week is good weather and your instructor didn't call in sick or something, whatever. And you get in the airplane, you're going to spend, and it's typically an hour long lesson, hour of Hobbs time, the engine running on the airplane, uh, you're going to spend the first, especially in the beginning, the first half of that lesson reviewing what you did last week. Right. So because, uh, you know, it's just different. You know, we all start from the beginning when we start learning how to fly cars. It's not like, or fly cars, fly airplanes. It's not like driving a car where you sat there and watched your parents do for do it for 16 years. So by the time you started driving, you already had a good wherewithal of what's going on right you know uh everybody right. starts from the beginning in an airplane and um imagine if you were trying to learn how to drive a car once per, yeah one hour once per week it would take forever right yeah airplane yep. complex there's different rules there's different things so um accelerated training is where i'm going with this whole spiel and absolutely that's the thing mike and i push that's uh one of the big bases is the the program is built around is uh, accelerated training. The faster you go, the more money you're going to save, the more you're going to re retain stuff. It's just a better deal. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and don't take our work for it. Look at, for example, how the pros do it. So uh, uh, skip past all this primary training, which we're talking about, and look at when you go to learn to fly a jet, right? In the jet world, uh, you go away and you work eight hours a day, sometimes longer. Uh, working on that airplane systems, learning everything about it. And then you're in the simulator, you're in the simulator five, six, seven hours a day, debriefing, rebriefing. Um, and th sometimes with one day off in it and, you know, every, every two weeks or something, I mean, um, because the pros know that's how they do it. Look at airline training, very intense. Uh, uh, you know, Sean can speak to that. I mean, uh, uh, they, they do it the same way. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's how they do it. Yep. As a matter of fact, most of the airlines use like a flight safety facility or whatever. They just lease one out for themselves. And right. Um, but where, why we're mentioning, you know, your local flight school though, most likely is not set up for, or possibly even heard of the idea of accelerated training. Now there are some big schools out there that do this. There's uh, there's even some medium schools and there are a few, a couple I've ran into over the years, mom and pop schools that have started doing this. Um, actually, that's where I learned of accelerated training. Uh, it was I was in the Air Force at the time and uh, I was working on uh, getting my instrument rating. And I found this company over in Minnesota that I could get it in 10 days. I mean, there was prerequisites. Nice. You had to show up yeah. with I forget what it was, maybe so much simulated instrument time already but you uh 10 days instrument instrument rating three days they did a commercial rating um and that's accelerated training now in those 10 days every day you're at the airport flying you're at the airport eight hours a day um maybe you spend four hours in the airplane but the other four hours you are sitting in there absorbing stuff uh looking through books talking with your instructor and maybe they got a, a little instrument simulator there, you know, which they did a little yeah. Nebraska at this place. Um, you're reviewing stuff for your check ride. You're literally everything eat, drinking and sleeping airplanes and that rating. Even when you go out to lunch, you're out to lunch with your instructor, usually talking about this or that flying. But so that yeah. leads me to the next two questions. This was three people's questions in one show. Uh, Riley writes in. Hey guys, I recently discovered you guys on YouTube while researching what my next step uh, for my future career as a pilot should be. I'm 19 years old, 
I'm a 19 year old pilot in Alaska, which is uh, that's interesting. I think uh, cool. Yeah, I think there's one airplane for every 10 people in Alaska or something. <laughs> or maybe it's one airplane for every five people in Alaska, but one in 10 people have a pilot's license because a lot of people just fly without a license up there because it's so vast, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So the, the more I've researched and going back to the question, the more I've researched and landed uh, and talked to different pilots, the more I've been leaning towards fast track schools like ATP. And what Riley means to say there is accelerate training, not fast track. I know the training can be a little less than quality. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the idea that I could come back to Alaska right now, back in six months with my multi-engine commercial seems too good to pass up. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Should I try a fast track school or should I stay local and save a little money? Well, we just went over. If you stay local, you most likely are not going to save money. You're just paying a little more money over a longer time and it may have the appearance of saving money, but you're not saving any money. Um, uh, we'll get back to that. So <laughs> I keep going to these tangents. Right. And then the next question from L, actually his handle on YouTube is, I'm probably going to say this wrong, El Vito, El Vito. Uh, hey, I'm thinking on going to ATP flight school. You guys think it's worth it because the program is a lot of money, but it looks like the fastest way and also a well-known flight school. All right, L, you are right. They're a well-known flight school. They have this ATP school. If you have, you could Google them right now. They have, uh, they have kind of, they've been blowing up. I see their ads on YouTube everywhere and everything. They've taken this accelerated flight training and got it very organized. Yes. They have, they have uh, facilities or locations all over the country. Um, you know, one of their biggest schools down in Florida. Um, they literally have an air force of air of training aircraft in the air all day long, all the time. And right. They're doing the accelerated training. Um, I don't remember offhand there. Um, I know we mentioned it in the program as we had all their stuff pulled up. Um, how long they're. Oh, I, I remember they, they want you to show up with your private pilot's license, though. Yeah. So the, the first question that that guy'd be a good candidate. Right. Because he's working on that now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Back to the ATP thing, though. Mike and I both like ATP. We've mentioned them before. We think they're great. Yeah, I've trained there. Yeah, I, I've trained there, too. Actually, yeah, we found that out on one of the podcast. We both got our – back in the day before our ATPs, restricted ATPs, uh, we're going to do another episode on that, actually, breaking that down. Right. Uh, Mike and I both got our ATP back then, uh, the Airline Transport Pilot's License um, Certificate. Which is yeah. done differently now. That's not something you guys are necessarily going to have to worry about. That'll be done at the airlines for you guys um, somewhat. But anyway, they are a great school. Um, and right before we went on the air here, Mike and I were talking about, you know, like, well, do we fully just, we fully endorse it? <laughs> right. That like our go-to and. And I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. It's just I do know ATP has competitors. Um, right. And, uh, you know, American Flyers is one of them. They're one of the big name brand schools that do this. Right. But uh, like I mentioned, there are some smaller schools out there that you can – the term for this is accelerated training. You could Google accelerated flight training and see what kind of results you get back. Um, you may find somebody out in Arizona. Actually, I think there is one of them in Arizona. It's a lesser known name brand school. And, uh, you know, you may be able to do it 30% cheaper than going to ATP. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I will tell you though. I mean, it's been great training. You, you, this is a good uh, video here to do an endorsement for me. Cause I, I, you know what it looks like, Sean, is I'm on one of those crime shows where I'm a victim. And I'm afraid yeah. they're going to see me. And, but so I, I'm talking, well, but you can't really cool. see my face. Yeah, it got dark on us quick. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, I'm going right. to go find some some uh, light here. But yeah, I, I actually did my ATP at, at ATP and was very impressed with uh, their their procedures and how they handle things. Um, and uh, y y yeah, you may say, you know, oh, they teach you how to uh, exactly pass the test, which I mean, maybe that's the case, but man, I'll tell you, it is, it was very efficient. 
And I, you know, I only did a short program there, but I went there, stayed in a hotel. I think it was a week long or something. And then did the, uh, did the training and, you know, I felt really good. They have a ton of locations. The one that I went to was in Bowling Green, Kentucky, but, uh, uh, it is a, it's an efficient operation. I can say that for sure. Um, uh, but, but I, I agree with you. Uh, I think anyone can do the job as long as they have the manpower, uh, your, your comment about the, uh, the number of planes, that's important. I actually just had a, a, a situation this week. I was supposed to meet a buddy uh, that is in a, a, a flying club, and that's and they do instruction there. And uh, he wanted me to go flying with him, private pilot. And we were all set up to do it. The weather was perfect. And he called, and he said, oh, yeah, the plane was in for an oil change this morning, and they found something wrong with it, and now it's down. So if you're if you're trying to get your training done quickly, and you you know you're in an operation with one or two airplanes, and they have a maintenance issue. Sometimes you you lose a, a week or two, you know, depending on what the right. what the issue is with that. So um, ATP is not like that. They got you know tons of aircraft. They have multi engine aircraft, um, and they've been doing this a long time. So yeah, I mean, let's yeah, I, I would encourage the the viewers to check them out. They also have uh, uh, some financing options too. Yes, uh, that that they work through their programs, which is another really. A uh, hot topic that we get emailed about is about money and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah and no, so I, does I, um, so does their main competitor. I believe their direct competitor is American Flyers, and uh, they similar operation as ATP. They have airplanes everywhere. I don't I don't know if they have as many locations as ATP, but some of those ATP locations are just testing facilities anyway. They're not even. I don't know know if they have you know all the airplanes, but. Um, American Flyers also has yep. um, financing options, and both American Flyers and ATP are are connected with some of these regional carriers. So on the back end, the way these schools work is, you go there. It's you know it's a significant chunk of money. It's probably I think when we were pricing them out, Mike, about a year ago it was like eighty grand or something. And that's after you yeah. have your private. You show up and it's eighty grand, and then you're done within a few months. You have all your certificates and ratings. You get your your certified flight instructor rating, your CFI, um, and then you start teaching for them in their airplanes. It's built into the program. So you already mm -hmm. know the whole gambit. You just went through it, all the syllabuses and everything, and now you start teaching them. And uh, right. now you start getting paid to fly while you're gaining hours. And then it, on the back end, like I said, they're hooked up with some, some uh, airlines and stuff. But th this is the key to getting through this thing as fast and cheap as pro as possible. This is the biggest hurdle. You know, these the, the flying is expensive. And uh, as you get out there and start doing it, yeah, if you start doing this, trying to fly once a week stuff, you're going to nickel and dime yourself to death. And it's going to take you two years to get your private pilot's license. Um, when, if you went to an accelerated school, you could have it done in less than a month. Um, but uh, yeah. Like I said, I think I already mentioned, uh, you know, in the program, the ProPod Playbook program we, we sell, we actually have it all listed in there on how to possibly turn your, uh, we call it the ProPilot method, and it's turning your flight school, your little mom and pop flight school into an accelerated school. And it's, right. it's about, you know, getting with the schedule of the airplane, blocking an airplane off so nobody else can have it getting a flight instructor, some go-getter guy that's out there seven days a week, uh, telling him what the plan is and getting him to agree to be with you every day for however many days. And, uh, yeah, and you can turn your local flight school into an accelerated flight school at, at significantly less dollar amount than running off to an ATP, which is also you're going to have to stay somewhere. You know, if, if unless you have one in your backyard, you go down to Florida to ATP. Don't forget about the uh, expense of, um, you know, living in a hotel for a little bit. And they might have some deals set up with some local long state places. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I, I think all, all those things have to be considered. And uh, uh, spending, uh, what you know, you see that high price tag and you're like, well, but, you know, when you look at it, if you if you finish much faster than you would uh, in a conventional place, you may actually be saving money. But, uh, you know, yeah, a lot. Of, this is a very core part of our course. And, you know, we're not trying to pitch the course, but really for the price of the course, it's less than even one hour of training in an airplane. 
and uh, this is a big, big part of what we go over in that. So uh, if anybody's on the fence of getting it and you're serious about your flight training, it would help out a ton because it addresses all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. And uh, the lighting's much better in the course. Um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Yeah, I don't know. The other big thing with schools is um, I don't know if we want to get into this. How how long are we in to this already? I can't see how long. There's no counter yeah. on the recorder. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I was I was going to mention 141 versus 61 schools. Oh yeah, maybe That's we ought important. to do a whole. You know what? Let's just do a whole episode on that. Yeah, yeah, because there is a difference there, and it's a notable difference if that's something you're going to be doing. Yeah, you're looking into so. Right. Um, yeah, most of these accelerated schools, just to drop this hint out um, on 61 verse 141, uh, the accelerated schools are moving way too fast to do anything with part 141. They're all part 61. Yeah. If that gives you any hint on which which way to go. <laughs> uh, uh, all the colleges, the colleges are, are 141. They have to be. That's part of the part of the. Uh, requirement for that are ATP right but uh, yeah uh, I think we answered everybody's question basically yes locations important moving slow is gonna cost you more money not save you money oh real quick uh, somebody said something oh Riley said uh, something about ATP I know the training can be a little less than quality but the idea that I could leave I don't know where where Riley got that from. I, I've never, yeah. uh, I, I've never heard anything about low quality. Right. Right. I didn't experience that either. So yeah, it's probably okay. Like I think it's anything, a more of a cost thing, you know, is what you'd really be looking at, uh, uh, what they charge and what somebody else would charge. You know? Now, if you're now, somebody may have told Riley that while, you know, looking at colleges or something, and you may have had a college say something negative about ATP, but um, there's nothing negative about ATP. As a matter of fact, I mean, like Mike, you were just saying, or I, I had said they got a whole Air Force of airplanes, and you were talking about the maintenance event. You know, right. In order to do this, you basically have to have an airplane for at least an airplane for 0.5 of every one of your students there because you're going to be in an airplane half the day. Um, yeah. If one's, if one's busted or going into maintenance you just get in the next one which is the exact same airplane only it has a different number on the tail because they literally have like uh down there in vero beach that flight school they got like 60 little cherokees sitting on the ramp they're all exactly the same exactly the same paint they're just one number off on <laughs> all lined up whatever yeah those guys come out there and we call them bogeys they're out there learning how to fly <laughs> around vero beach airport we're coming in and oh yeah Oh God, they're everywhere. Yep. Patterns full on two different runways and they're trying to slip the jet in, in between these knuckleheads. <laughs> I yeah. Them, yeah. They're bogeys, bogeys everywhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bug smashers. That's what I call them. <laughs> right. All right. So I think that wraps this up. If you guys have a question you'd like us to answer here on the podcast and there is somebody over there on the left in the dark. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it the lights we'll on the bridge them. back there or something I see? What is that? Uh, yeah, it is the, the pier. They, uh, got some oh, LED pier. lights. Yeah. Yeah. Running out on the pier here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, uh, the camera doesn't pick it up too well, but there's still a little bit of light out here, but, uh, the, officially this is your fault though. I was ready to start about 45 minutes ago and you weren't ready. Yeah. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah. good. At least we got one in and, you know, we didn't miss a week this week. So, uh, right. but uh, we do really appreciate all the viewers and we're trying to stay consistent here. And uh, maybe we'll uh, drop two uh, this week to make up for it. We'll drop another. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. But yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'm interrupting you again. Right, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and sending us questions. We appreciate it. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the podcast, you can email us at podcast at propilotplaybook.com and until next time keep flying get to the airport and we'll see you here in a back in a few days with another episode yeah have a good one